Oh yeah, this video is to show how I set up peak shift mode in my Mega Revo R8K LNA uh, in the settings that I'm using. Now, it does ask for a password. The default password is all zeros. You can get into the system settings. So the first thing is the work mode, go into peak shift. You can set up your times for when you're charging, when you're discharging. You don't have to set up all of the times, but I ended up putting some times in and I don't know how to actually blank them. So some of them are kind of oddball, like one minute times. So the other settings I've got in here that I think are useful to look at, the anti-reflux, this is whether you're sending power back to the grid or if you're just sending enough power to zero out your consumption. CT ratio. I have that set to 2,500 to 1 because I'm using some aftermarket CTs and they are 2,500 to 1 CTs. The CTs that come with the Mega Revo are 1,000 to 1, but they're only 90 amp, and they're not very large, so they wouldn't fit on the wires on my breaker panel. So thankfully, in a recent update, they did allow you to change the ratio of the CTs, and you can use other CTs, and CTs are pretty interchangeable. So if you need some, by the way, I've got a bunch of these 2,500 to 1, 200 amp CTs on my website. If you need some uh, larger CTs for your Mega Revo that you know will work, and they actually have quite a bit of length on their cords instead of just being like two inches as well. I do have my battery type set to lithium. Uh, when it's set to lithium, that means that it is going to be looking for communications across CAN bus or RS-485. So in my case, I have a Seplos BMS that is set up as a pylon tech, I believe, and it will communicate with the Mega Revo just fine. My discharge depths I have set to 99%. The charge current, you don't have to set this uh, with the way that I have it set. BMS will communicate to the inverter how fast it's allowed to discharge from the battery or charge the battery in this case. Um, but you can override it with this setting. And the reason I overrid it was just because at night when I'm charging from the grid, I didn't want to do a full, you know, five, what, 10 kilowatts into the battery while I'm charging. It just seems like unnecessary roughness on the battery to charge that fast. So I just set it to 100 amps. Now, unfortunately, this also means that during the day when the sun is shining, I can only charge it up to 100 amps from the inverter into the battery. But with an 8.3 kilowatt array, and I'm using stuff during the day as well, um, 100 amps is, has been fine for me. Now, if we go into the run settings, um, this one is an obnoxious setting that is way down here in the menu, the active rep. And then there is an insulation test down here. So every morning this insulation test runs and it will shut off the inverter for a number of minutes and then come back on. So if you have the grid connected to the inverter, this is fine because it just goes into bypass mode. But if you're actually running in off-grid mode, then you lose power to the house while the thing is doing its insulation test. So there is at least the option of disabling it. I think it's kind of obnoxious that you have to disable a safety feature in order for it to work correctly. But when we buy cheap Chinese inverters, you know, sometimes you gotta deal with what you gotta deal with. Something of note is that I believe that the manual and the Mega Revo uh, have it backwards the way the CTs are supposed to sit on the incoming lines. And the, the, what you're supposed to do is measure the current that's flowing from the grid into the panel or vice versa. And what I've heard and, and what I experienced is when you get them installed and you do peak shift mode and you enable anti-reflux and it will immediately just start dumping power to the grid as fast as possible at 8,000 watts because that's how fast it can dump from the inverter out to the grid. When in anti-reflux mode, it should only dump enough to zero out your consumption from the grid. Um, in a previous firmware update, it would like zero minus 100, so you're still playing 100 watts from the grid. In the current firmware that I have on here, it's it tries to zero it out to zero, and it's, it's pretty good. I end up pushing like, three kilowatt hours to the grid and pulling like one or 1 1.5 from the grid. I don't think it's even that. I think it's like less than one kilowatt hour from the grid. So that's what I'm most concerned about because I do have an interconnect agreement. So I'm not worried about pushing power to the grid. Um, I just don't want to pay 30 cents a kilowatt hour for pulling it from the grid. So I've actually got my CTs reversed. So when they have a little arrow on the CT and they say point this towards the inverter or point this towards the grid, it's actually reversed. So when I'm looking in Solar Assistant at all of my, um, my logs, my data, it's actually wrong. You can see on here that grid exported has significant numbers, like back on February 26th, 32.2 kilowatt hours. But I'm never just 
pushing solar to the grid. That's really grid import because that was probably a day where I spent a lot of time charging my battery and then grid used, like I know that, you know, midnight to 5 a.m. I'm just running from the grid and 8 p.m. to midnight I'm running from the grid. So those numbers are just totally wonky. It would make a whole lot more sense if grid used and grid exported were flopped. So I think inside the inverter, those are flopped. But the inverter works correctly. So that's something I'm gonna be talking with uh, the Mega Revo guys to see if there's something in software they can update from where to make that right, which then is probably gonna break everyone's stuff and they're gonna have to go reverse their CTs again. But I'm pretty sure that's backwards. Um, yeah.